case 12 is a 50 year old from Indonesia with back and abdominal pain. Here's some images from a contrast enhanced CT of the abdomen. It could just as easily be a CT of the lumbar spine. See there's some findings in the spine, so take a look at those. So because of that study, they went on to get an MRI of the lumbar spine. These are T2 on the left and T1 post contrast on the right. You see findings that correspond to those abnormalities on CT. You see some axial images, uh, again, T2 and post contrast. Put these labels here just so you don't get confused. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell this is a T2. This again, I've labeled it for you. It's from a slightly different level. It's a post contrast image from the lower thoracic spine. Finally, we have some additional images from elsewhere in the body, a few images from a chest CT, and some images from an MRI of the brain. Here you have a flare and a post contrast from through the Centrum Simia Valley. This is a diffusion, so DWI on the left and ADC on the right. Here are just a few additional post-contrast images. So that's all the images you're going to have for this case. You've seen a lot of stuff, images of the chest, images of the brain and spine. So think about a way that those might be put together. Your first question is, what's the most likely diagnosis? So what kind of diagnosis might lead to those spine findings as well as other findings within other organ systems? And now 12B, what feature frequently differentiates this from bacterial discitis osteomyelitis? So this question is kind of giving it away that it's probably discitis osteomyelitis, but what feature of this makes it unique? So this is a case of disseminated tuberculosis and specifically tuberculosis in the spine. The classic presentation of spinal tuberculosis spares the intervertebral disc so you'll recognize that from your question just a second ago. You can develop fistulas to the skin or to the pleura. It's common to have involvement of other systems, including the lungs, uh, abdomen, and brain. Tuberculomas in the brain can have reduced diffusion, but their classic appearance is these T2 hypo-intense lesions. So here I'll show you some of the findings. So what you have here in the L3 vertebral body is destruction of this vertebral body. You see the posterior cortex is absent and you've got this mass extending into the ventral epidural space here. On the post-contrast imaging, you've actually lost so much, it's somewhat challenging to even tell where the vertebral body uh, begins and ends. Here you have a little pre-vertebral fluid collection. This is the vertebral body somewhere in here. And then you have, here's a disc space that's relatively spared and it's kind of tracking along the epidural space here. I'm sorry, these aren't lined up. Again, you have epidural disease here coming out of the posterior aspect of the L5 vertebral body. So multifocal spine disease. And the axials look just terrible. Here you have a T2. I pointed out as you were going through the case, you can't even see the CSF, uh, making it a little bit challenging to tell that this is a T2 image. We have severe canal narrowing uh, because of this phlegmon and mass. Here you have a psoas muscle on this side, which looks relatively normal. This psoas is completely elevated and has a big abscess within it. Here on post contrast, you see there's a big fluid collection and is peripherally enhancing, again, involving that psoas, the vertebral body, and the epidural space. Here's the images from the chest CT. So this was just meant to give you a clue that you're looking at a systemic disease. Here you see some ground glass nodules and kind of consolidation in the left uh, lung here. And um, then here you see a mass in the ribs. So you see some pleural thickening here, some osseous destruction. Uh, so you're definitely looking at a systemic process here that's involving multiple organ systems. And then finally, in the brain, you have these lesions that are relatively dark on full air with some surrounding hyperintensity or edema. They enhance avidly and they don't have central diffusion uh, restriction. So I showed you this just so you know that uh, this is not a bacterial abscess because bacterial abscesses tend to have reduced diffusion pus centrally. So the question that you had for two we talked about is tuberculomas tend to have sparing of the intervertebral disc. Uh, they lack the enzymes that uh, bacteria have that destroy the disc. 
So uh, you'll often see that, or at least that's the classic teaching that you'll see on a test.